Oklahoma State 41, Texas 34. And I got to tell you, this was uh, a little bit crazy when you look at the stats, right? You look at the numbers. Uh, he said, what did the odds makers see in Texas to make them a six-and-a-half-point favorite versus Oklahoma State? Well, I will tell you this. According to the stats, what Texas is good at, what Oklahoma State is good at, and vice versa, like the strengths versus weaknesses, et cetera, I mean, my numbers had Texas favored pretty significantly in this game. Uh, we're talking double digits here. But also, you're going on the road. It's Quinn Ewers' first road start. All these different things. There's a reason why it was six and a half. And it opened at one at multiple books and got hit immediately, bounced up to three and a half. You start hearing news about Spencer Sanders maybe being out. That thing starts steaming up. It ended up back down at five and a half. It may have closed at five, somewhere around there. So there was some certain, certainly some buyback on Oklahoma State. Uh, so it wasn't crazy that Texas was a six and a half point favorite at one point. Uh, and it did get to seven at multiple spots. And as soon as it hit seven, I mean, there was a ton of buyback from uh, a lot of groups uh, out in Vegas that ended up, you know, moving that thing immediately back down to six and a half. But by kickoff, like I said, it was five and a half, five, somewhere around there. Let's uh, let's pull up the stats and take a look here. Um, I'll go on and tell you, like Texas was expected to win this game the majority of the game, as you can see in the win probability charts there. Uh, and I didn't go through and do the the normal, you know, yards per play, third downs, whatever. We'll talk about things as we get to them. But these will be a little quicker breakdowns because I, I want to hit on more games today. Um, Oklahoma State had zero penalties. Texas had 14 for 119 yards. You want to talk about a discrepancy that matters? Yeah, that that's definitely going to matter. And no, I don't think that we've got some kind of conspiracy where the Big 12 refs are trying to push uh, the brands that are going to stay in the conference and all that kind of mess, right? I, I do not buy that. You look at it, Texas... At one point, their EPA was up to plus 11.59, uh, right, or 12.09. And then it just steadily declined as the day went along. As they ran more plays, they ended up negative 10.39 in total EPA. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And Oklahoma State actually got a little bit better as the day went along. On the screen, this is at gameonpaper.com, by the way. Uh, purple is bad and green is good. And you see a lot of of purple for Texas. Uh, there's there's this thing about Quinn Ewers. He is incredibly talented, but he looks like a redshirt freshman at multiple times. And remember, this is not a guy that has played all season. He was out for a four-week stretch there. So, yeah, it's going to cause problems because he hasn't seen all of this. There were ways that Oklahoma State was able to confuse him. Uh, his stats overall on the day... Uh, not great. Let's go on and pull these up. This is over at Stat Broadcast. Uh, Quinn Ewers, 19 out of 49. So when his first read is not there, second read, maybe, uh, he doesn't know what to do with it. Had three interceptions. Now, one of them at the end was certainly, you know, bounced off of the receiver's hands and uh, bobbed up, you know, et cetera. At, at that point, yeah, that's, it, it's an issue. It's an issue, right? Uh, this is a team that leans on Bijan Robinson and while he was able to do some big things, I mean, 24 carries for 140 yards, not great. Now, I should probably have started this off with the winning team. Mike Gundy is absurd. I think he's like 25-5-2 and two, uh, his last, what, 32 games after after a loss? I mean, that's, that's nuts. Um, that's against the spread, by the way. That, I mean, we're, we're talking crazy, crazy numbers. Spencer Sanders threw the ball 57 times with a bum shoulder. Uh, 391 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. That Texas defense was not bad for most of the day um, at all. Like, I, I was I was really shocked at this. Uh, Texas ended up winning the yards per play battle, 6.5 to 5.5 here. But the issue that I ran into, if you look over here on the total plays, uh, and I'll highlight it there for everybody, 98 plays for Oklahoma State on offense to only 81. Like, that is bonkers. Uh, Texas outrushed them 6.4 yards per rush to only 3.6. Uh, it's sack adjusted. Texas had over 200 rushing yards on the day. But you get down to it, and 
you know, turnovers. Obviously, you had one more for Texas, so that's one more possession for Oklahoma State. And this was a Texas team that just was not ready for this road moment. Uh, those penalties, I mean, that's 119 yards that are hidden that you're not able to get anywhere else. So uh, this was a big-time win for Oklahoma State. It keeps them to only one in the loss column in the Big 12. Texas now three losses on the season, two in the Big 12. Uh, Texas still has a ton of talent. They are really, really good. But they were not good enough to overcome that, right? Those penalties, the turnovers, it's going to get you beat, especially on the road, every single time. Every time. So, cheers to them. Uh, To Oklahoma State, getting it done. Uh, Texas feels like they beat themselves a lot of the day. And as you were watching this, I mean, it just, it it felt almost inevitable that Oklahoma State was going to find a way to win. And then, of course, that late touchdown pass to Brennan Presley where they could not get him on the ground. Uh, it it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Fantastic ball game, though. Fantastic ball game. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.